Hello and welcome. My name is Natalie Schlute. Today's episode is all about pendulum do's and don'ts. I have created a few other pendulum videos to explain one, how to correctly get answers using a pendulum. So if you're absolutely new to pendulums, be sure to watch that video first so that you can learn how to train your pendulum, how to build a connection with it. And then I also have an episode all about programming your pendulum. So that's more advanced. It's the more advanced work once you've started playing and practicing. Playing and practicing is really just learning how to move and use and get connected to your pendulum. The programming is where you train it specifically with certain words and phrases so that it does exactly what you want it to do. Those are really two important places to start before we get into the do's and don'ts. Although just understanding the do's and don'ts is really important too. So you can watch this video and then go back, how, whatever order you like to do that in. But understand that a pendulum is a way of tapping into your own subconscious. It's a way of connecting with your own body, your own intuition, if you're having a difficult time because you're just too in your head, right? Sometimes we overthink everything and instead of paying attention to what's happening in our body and what's coming through intuitively for us by getting quiet, tapping in and really connecting on a soul level, we just get caught up in our mind. We get caught up in the day to day. We get caught up on external things in our environment. And it can sometimes be difficult to tap in internally. So in order to understand your, yourself better and your intuition better, using how a pendulum is a really great practice. It's a really great way of reconnecting, realigning, and training yourself to be more intuitive in a lot of different ways. It gives you direct feedback with what your intuition and your body is telling you on any given subject that you're using the pendulum for. You can check out my previous videos for more about how pendulums actually work on a scientific level and all of that good stuff. If you love everything that has to do with intuition, developing your psychic skills and manifestation, be sure to subscribe and like this video. I also have an amazing free resource on my website with all of my freebies, all of my downloads that you can tap into right now if you'd like to. I put a link in the show notes below for my manifestation and metaphysical download library. Everything's free and you get everything in one place. So let's dive right in to the top five things I don't want you to be doing, and then we'll follow it up with the top five things that I do want you to do with your pendulum. First off, I don't want you to be asking your pendulum for future predictions. When you start asking about the future, you're no longer just tapping into your own intuition. You're actually channeling spirit guides that are a lower vibration in the physical earth realm. And so you're inviting in potentially negative things that you don't necessarily want to be tapping into. You might even get some very incorrect answers that way. So the pendulum's not really meant to be used for future predictions. It's not meant to be used as a psychic tool. It's meant to be used as a way for you to connect more deeply with yourself, with your intuition, with your subconscious, with what's in alignment with you at any given moment. So one, don't be using it to tap into psychic information. The second thing is, if you're getting some really negative outcomes with your pendulum, don't trust it. You may not have worked with your pendulum long enough, you haven't done enough of your own inner clearing, and you might be channeling some spirit guides that aren't looking out for your highest and best interests. So be really careful of the type of questions that you're asking. Question if the answers that are coming through are really true. In the beginning when working with pendulums, people get a lot of incorrect answers because they're not a clear channel. Your pendulum is a reflection of you and your state of being and where you're at. So if you haven't done enough energy clearing, if you're not in a good mental and emotional space, you're not going to be getting clear answers. You're actually gonna be getting incorrect answers. And so the third thing is, make sure that you're in a really good emotional state. Do not use your pendulum, just like channeling spirit guides, don't use any of these psychic and intuitive tools when you're in a bad mood, when you're depressed, when you're worried, when you're having anxiety or panic attacks, when you're low, you do not want to be tapping into the psychic and intuitive realm. And the reason for that is, is because when you start reaching out and you're in a really low place, you are instantly going to attract things 
through the law of attraction in the spiritual realm that are also of lower vibration. So that's when you're more likely to attract in spirits, attract in negative thought patterns, attract in all of these icky feelings and things that are just going to perpetuate the negativity that you're already experiencing because of the state you're in. It's really important to be doing the inner work, to be getting a lot of inner clarity and energy clearing before doing any of this type of work. This is why when I teach in my online academy, I make sure that my students are always focusing on building themselves up first through manifestation and law of attraction, doing all the inner work so that they're in their highest vibration before they ever get to level two, where I teach more of the psychic and channeling abilities. And that's set up that way specifically for this reason. You don't want to be doing spiritual work when you're low, when you're down, because you're not going to know what the difference is. And you're going to get a lot of incorrect readings and your imagination is going to be attracting things that aren't for your highest and best good. The fourth thing that I want you to watch out for is the fact that understanding a lot of questions and a lot of the things that we're, we're questioning about in our life don't necessarily have a black or white right or wrong answer to it. So you might be asking questions that maybe aren't the best questions to be asking. So the results you're getting aren't all that great. When we understand this concept, now you can approach your questions from a much higher level space. When you ask higher level questions, you get higher level answers. When you ask low level questions, you're going to get low level answers. So if you're trying to ask your pendulum things like, is this right? Is this correct? Understand that most things aren't just right or correct. A lot of things, there's a lot of shades of gray, and it really depends on your perspective and how you look at things. So once again, your pendulum is going to give you an answer based off of your subconscious belief system not necessarily off the truth. It's gonna, not going to tell you if something is right or if something is wrong. It's going to tell you what you think is right or what you think is wrong. So if you already have a preconceived belief system in your subconscious mind, your pendulum is going to give you your belief system. It's going to give you what you believe is true, not necessarily what's true in the universe. And so that's really important to understand. This is why pendulums sometimes don't work for people. It's not that the pendulum isn't working. It's that you don't understand how the pendulum works. And therefore, the answer that you're getting is incorrect based off of your expectations and your understanding of what pendulums actually do. And the fifth thing is don't use someone else's pendulum. If a pendulum belongs to a friend or family member, it is programmed and it has built a relationship with that individual. So it is for your highest and best good not to go and use someone else's pendulum. I have attempted to pick up other people's pendulums before. I've you know, been at my sibling's house and they're like, hey, will you check my chakras? And I try to hold their pendulum and I just feel this pendulum is not working for me. It, it's not vibing with me because it has their energy on it. And so it was better for me to just take off my necklace and use my necklace or use something else. Or if I had my pendulum with me, every once in a while it's in my purse with me. So, so sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll make sure I bring out my own. But you don't want to be mixing your energy with other people's energy and you might not get good answers if that pendulum doesn't jive with you. It's funny how pendulum works. I swear they have their own personalities because I've definitely held other people's pendulums and I would ask it some questions. It was kind of rocking in a weird way. And then I asked if, if it was okay if I worked with this pendulum, it would just give me a no. And so I'm like, okay, <laughs> let's drop it and move on. Now, the top five things that I do want you to do with your pendulum. Number one, program your pendulum. Make sure that you go through an extensive training and programming protocol so that you are deeply connected to your, your pendulum and your pendulum is working for you. That entire experience I have given you in another video. So make sure you check out my video, how to program your pendulum, because I go through the details of exactly how to do that. And that's the number one thing you want to make sure that you're doing. The second thing I want you to do is be really specific about the questions you ask. So once again, we're not asking questions about the future. We're not asking questions if things are right or wrong. We're asking questions that allow us to bring insight to our own life, our own inner guidance, what is right and in alignment for us. So when you start out with questions like, can I, may I, should I, all of a sudden, now you're finding out, is this a, in the highest and best interest for yourself? And I, I use that as my opening lot. 
is blank for the highest and best interest of me and everyone around me. And that's how I will state a lot of my questions. I state them in the positive because I want to make sure that the answer that I'm getting is going to be in the highest and best good for me, the highest and best good for anyone involved in the question and for my life and the world at large, right? I want to make sure that everything I'm doing is, is of the highest positivity and is going to be getting the best results. I want things to be in harmony and cohesive. And so making sure that you can even ask before you ask a specific question, say there's a subject that you want to ask a bunch of questions about, can I, may I, should I ask questions about this subject? And your pendulum might give you a yes. Totally okay to start asking questions about this subject. It might give you a no, meaning this might not be something that you should be using a pendulum for. So you can ask advice for the pendulum because your pendulum is going to tap in once again to your subconscious and your subconscious knows deep down if this is something that's in alignment or out of alignment for you to be questioning about. The third thing you do want to do is make sure that you're practicing your pendulum and using it and connecting with it every day for a few weeks in the very beginning. I have been using my pendulum for well over a decade now. So in the beginning, I used this thing every day for a month, a few months, and I used it pretty consistently early on in those few years as I was really developing my intuition and my psychic skills. I don't use it very much anymore, but it's still a beautiful tool. I got a lot of feedback on myself and it really helped me to reflect back what the little nuances I was feeling in my body were. And by getting that confirmation through the pendulum, I was better able to understand myself and my health and what was a definite yes for me and what wasn't. And so it was a mirror for me in what was going on in my inner world. And I highly recommend that you do that too. You can always use it years and years later. I still use it every once in a while, even though it's been over a decade, but I use it very sparingly. I maybe pick it up once a month, if that, um, a couple times here and there just for fun. Sometimes I just want to reconnect with my pendulum because I feel like it misses me. <laughs> the fourth thing I want to make sure you do is trust what comes through, especially when the answers are non-specific. In order to get good with your pendulum, you have to build the trust. And trust comes with time, it comes with practice, it comes with spending time and just really deeply connecting with that pendulum and getting more clarity. It's also a connection to yourself. To build trust in any relationship, whether it's a friend or a new romantic relationship, it takes time. You have to spend quality time with that person in order to build trust. And so spending time with your pendulum is also spending time with yourself because you're building trust with yourself and in your abilities. You're building trust with the reading that's coming out and trusting that it is aligned with what your subconscious is feeling. And so make sure that you're practicing and you're just building that foundation and trusting what comes through. You can even keep a journal. I would highly recommend keeping a journal as you play with your pendulum so that you're tracking what questions you're asking and what's coming through for you and also track your mood, how you were feeling during that time so that you can look back on it and get some clarity. Hmm, this is the answer I got with the pendulum and this is how I was feeling and this is what I was experiencing at the time. And you can find some correlations. Often hindsight is 2020. In the moment, we're lost and confused, but we can look back a few months down the road and realize, wow, there was a lot of consistency. Okay, now you can start to find the patterns within yourself and within your relationship with your pendulum so that trust and that connection is really built strongly. And that way you can use it and really feel like the answers that are coming through for you are true and in aligned with who you are. And the fifth thing I want you to do is really pay attention to what's coming through for you intuitively as you're using your pendulum. You might see visions in your mind's eye, like clairvoyant thoughts. You might hear some things coming in, or maybe they sound like your own thoughts, but notice what those thoughts are. You might be getting some clairaudient things too. Notice what's happening in your body if you're getting some clairsentient sensations, uh, a heaviness in your stomach, an opening in your heart, maybe some other energies going on. What are you feeling in your nervous system? Pay attention to all of these little subtle nuances that you're experiencing in your body intuitively as you're using your pendulum because the pendulum is your connection to yourself. It is your connection to your intuition and your connection to everything that your intuition is able to pick up. So it's another way of just building that energy within yourself, starting to trust yourself, trying to be more aware of yourself. And you're going to get a lot more out of your pendulum work if you're paying attention to what's going on in your body 
than purely thinking of this as something totally separate from you. Your pendulum is an extension of your body. It is not separate from you. It's not something magical that's just going to pick up answers. It's a reflection of you. It's a mirror of you. So pay attention to what's really going on so that you can develop all of your intuitive and psychic skills a little bit deeper above and beyond just using the pendulum. And I have a ton of videos on my YouTube page all about intuitive work. So if you want to know more about all of your clear senses, all of your psychic abilities, what they look like, how they feel, how they show up for you, be sure to check out those episodes and all of those playlists that I have for you on my YouTube channel. Please like, subscribe, and hit that bell to this video so that you get notified with all of my future videos and make sure that you interact with this. If you have any questions, be sure to ask questions below, leave your comments, share with me your stories. The more interaction we have on these videos, the more it gets pushed out to other people that can enjoy and learn all of this amazing intuitive content for the spiritual awakening that's happening all over the world right now. And don't forget to check out more of my playlists on my page. I can't wait to see you in more videos like this, developing your intuition, using your pendulum, and expanding your consciousness.